Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. This is a YouTube channel specialized in the GED math test. And as always, remember that in the GED you have different format of questions, so we're going to do a mix of a few of them today. We're going to kick it off with a drop down menu question, which asks you uh, the following. So it's going to ask you to interpret this frequency table. OK, it says a store is going to promote one employee based on the number of sales made this week. The table below uh, or to the right, rather, uh, shows the items that the 72 employees sold. What percent of employees who sold? Uh, what was the percent uh, of employees uh, who sold items worth over $71. Okay, and if you uh, click this um, drop down menu, basically it gives you several percentages. Okay, so what you want to do here is first of all look at that category. Um, as I said, this is a frequency table, so if you kind of count, um, you know, those tallies up, you can see that it gives you um, different numbers. So, for example, in the category 46 to 60, you have 17 employees that sold items in that amount. And in the category 71 to $90, you have 18 employees. And then um, in the question, they're telling you uh, to find uh, the employees who sold over 71. Okay, so you would take that number, which is 18, as you can see in the table, and divided by the total number of employees, which is 72. That gives you 25, so that's the correct answer. Okay, so this next question involves you knowing a little bit about multiplying exponents. So it asks you to solve this expression. Uh, let's quickly remind ourselves how we would do this. So when you have a situation like this where um, the base is the same, meaning that all your variables are the same, so you have all y's, um, what you can do with the exponents is simply add them across. Okay, so in this case, if you have x raised to the third multiplied by x raised to the five, uh, what you would do is just um, add them across like this. And then the coefficients you would multiply together. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So let's add those exponents together. That would give you 20. And then the next thing you have to do is solve um, for your coefficients. OK, so in this case, the coefficient is the number in front of the y value. So you would multiply those three numbers together and you get 144 and then y raised to the 20 power. OK, so that's answer B. All right, so question three uh, involves uh, fractions. So it says G Jim used half a pound of peppers, two seventh pounds of pepperoni, and one and a twelfth pounds of cheese to make three pizzas. If he uses the same recipe to make seven pizzas, how much cheese does he need? Excuse me. So what you have to do here is first of all, they're telling you how much cheese he used for three pizzas. So what we need to do is find out how many he needs for one pizza. Okay, so we would take that amount, 1 12th uh, pound of cheese divided by 3, okay, which remember, when you, multi when you divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, which means you're going to flip that 3 around like that, and that gives you 1 36 per pizza. And then step two is find out how much pizza you need for, se uh, excuse me, how much cheese you need for seven pizzas. Okay, so you just multiply the number of pizzas, which is seven, um, by that fraction of cheese per pizza. So it gives you 736, which is option B. All right, so question four are two problems. Uh, where you may not use a calculator. Okay, so remember that there's around five to six problems in the GED where you can't use your calculator. And usually these problems are going to be like exponents, square roots, uh, line graphs, and such. Okay, so let's do the first one, which is a 10 uh, raised to the minus 2. Okay, so here just remember that when you have an exponent that is raised to the negative power, you have to rewrite it and say 1 over that number and the exponent. OK, so in this case, because it says negative 2, we would divide 1. We would say 1 divided by 5 raised to the second power, OK, which is that. OK, so in this case, again, we have to rewrite it um, to this, which give us, gives us 1 over 100. All right, so question B was a square root problem. And remember that a square root, when you have a number under the square root, what you have to ask yourself 
is what number multiplied by itself would give you that number. Okay, so what would uh, what number would give you 25 multiplied by itself? It would be 5, right? Okay, how about 4? It would be 2, 9 would be 3, and 100 would be 10. Okay, so in this case, um, 121 is actually 11. All right, so it is useful to know a few um, kind of square roots off the top of your head. Just memorize them so that you can go um, a little bit quickly. Uh, you don't lose time. Okay, question five is a geometry question. Lucy's learning archery. Uh, her target is shown below. The diameter of the inner circle for 35 points is 4 inches. The diameter increases by 12 inches for every subsequent uh, uh, circle. Uh, so what is the cir cir uh, circumference of the 5-point outer circle? Write your answer in the box below. Okay, so what you have to do is kind of rewrite this and remember that the inner circle is 4 inches and then Every single uh, circle increases by 4, so the next one would be 8 inches, and then the following one would be 12. Um, so the diameter of the 5-point outer circle is 12 inches. And all you have to do is plug that number into that equation, which is the one first circumference um, of a circle. Okay, that gives you 37.68. Okay, question six is a drag and drop question that looks at patterns and sequences. Okay, so sometimes one of the questions that, uh, the type of questions that you'll have in the problem are called drag and drop, where you're asked uh, to drag a answer from the bottom of the screen to that empty box. Okay, so it kind of looks like this. You would click on whatever you need, drop it in the correct spot, um, and then if you make a mistake, you can basically remove it, um, and that's how it works. Okay, so let's go back to the question. So the question is asking us to look at the sequence in these numbers. Okay, so minus 13, minus 8, minus 3, minus, uh, uh, and positive 2. So what's really helpful is just to take it bit by bit. Okay, so just look at the first uh, sequence. And just ask yourself, you know, what is happening here? Are we adding? Are we subtracting? Are we dividing? Are we multiplying? So in this case, when we're going from minus 13 to minus 8, we're actually adding 5. Okay, so let's see if this sequence repeats. So when we go from five, minus 8 to minus 3, again, we're adding plus 5. And from minus 3 to 2, we're also adding 5. So the next number is going to be 2 plus 5, which is going to be 7. Okay, so the next question is uh, involves percentages. So it says the Lopez family made a 17% down payment of an, on a new car, priced at $13,900. How much down payment did they make? All right, so for this sort of question, you want to remind yourself of this percentage rule, okay, which tells you that if you have the total price for something or the base and you multiply it by the rate or the percentage, in this case, the percentage is that 17% uh, down payment, you can find out the part, okay, the, the, the down payment in, in, this, in this case. So you would just uh, plug your numbers in like this, and that tells you the down payment, which was $2,363, option C. Okay, so this is uh, question eight is asking you to find the value of this expression, and this is an order of operation problems. Okay, so remember that you have to do mathematical operations in a sequence or an order. We usually always solve from left to right, and you have to follow this um, sequence called PEMDAS, which stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And also remember that you can add and divide in any order. So you could divide first and then multiply. Um, and the same thing with addition. You can either add and subtract, or you could subtract and then add. Okay, so in that order. All right, so the first thing in PEMDAS is the P parentheses. So we want to go ahead and solve what is inside the parentheses first. Um, I'm going to start with the parentheses on the right because it's got, aside from parentheses, it's got a bracket, okay? So you always want to start with a kind of like the more complex. So if we solve that bit out, we end up with this. 
And then if we take it one step further, we end up with that. And another step, we end up with one. Okay, so that's already clarified things quite a bit. Okay, so now we're going to solve the bracket, the parentheses on the left. So two divided one by one fifth. Remember that when you divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, meaning that you're going to flip the uh, fraction around like this. Okay, so you end up with 2 uh, times 5, which is 10, plus 25 plus 5, that gives you 40. All right, question nine is going to be a uh, geometry question. And um, it says, uh, Jane is designing an urban park shaped like a triangle. The dimensions of the park are shown below. What is the perimeter? All right, so let's first remind ourselves of what a perimeter means. So the perimeter means, um, you know, the distance uh, surrounding that figure. In the case of a triangle, you would have to add all the sides of the triangle to get the perimeter. So with that knowledge, it's very easy. All you have to do is take those three numbers for each of the sides, add them up, and that gives you option A. Okay, and our final question is, um, sometimes in the GED they ask you to set up equations, okay? So they want you to kind of think of problems in an algebra-like fashion. So once again, uh, we have these drop, uh, these uh, drag and drop uh, boxes uh, that you have to place into this equation. Okay, so it says, uh, Liz is selling uh, comic books and baseball cards to save money for a summer vacation. The comic books cost $2.50, the baseball cards $9. She needs to make at least $800 in earnings. If X represents the number of comic books sold, write an inequality to represent the income earning she needs. Okay, so we're going to call the comic books um, X. Um, so that's the number of comic books sold, which we don't know. Um, and Y is going to be the number of baseball cards that she sells, which we also don't know. So in here, what we're going to do is that we're going to kind of plug in the cost of each of these items. So $2.50 per comic book multiplied by the number of comic books plus the cost of one baseball card, $9, multiplied by Y, the number of baseball cards sold. And then it says she needs to make at least $800, okay? So equal to $800 or more than $800. So that's the symbol that you would use. Okay, folks, so that is it for today. Um, I hope you found some value in this. If you did, and please consider subscribing. Have a terrific rest of your day, and thank you so much again for your time. Take care.